Okay, so this is the rest of that second packet. Start solve 6.3, applications, which is another word for word problems. Give you a five step strategy, which is read. Of course, you need to read the problem. Make sure you understand what it is that they exactly are asking you for. Uh, step two, if necessary, write each unknown in terms of one variable. So what we're not gonna do is if we have multiple unknowns, use X for one, Y for the other, Z for another. No, we're gonna write all of them in terms of one variable and then um, that gives us one variable to solve for. We're gonna write an equation, then we're gonna solve and then check and make sure that we've actually answered the question. So I put asterisks beside two and three because those are the most challenging steps of the strategy. Normally, once you can get past two and three, then the rest is okay. So let's look at some examples. The yearly salary of a man with an associate's degree exceeds that of a man with some college by $3,000. The salary of a man with a bachelor's degree exceeds that of a man with some college by $41,000. Combined, they earn $188,000. What is the yearly salary of each? So notice we have three unknowns here and we wanna write an algebraic representation for each unknown. So we have a man with an associates, we have a man with some college, and we have a man with a bachelor's degree. So now what we're gonna do is call one of them X and write the other ones in terms of X. So if you notice that the man with some college is used in both of the sentences in both descriptions, there's a man with an associate that exceeds that of a man with some college by 3,000. A man with a bachelor's exceeds that of a man with some college by 41. So we can write both the associates and the bachelor's in terms of the uh, in terms of the uh, some college first. So we look at this, what we did, uh, call some college X. Then the associates exceeds that of a man with some college by three. So we add three to the sum college, we add three to the X. Then the bachelor just exceeds that of a man with some college by 41. So we add 41 to X. So we have X, X plus three, and then X plus 41. Then it says combined, they earn $188,000. So combined means if you add them together, they add up to give you 188. So that's what we did here, X plus X plus three, plus x plus one equal to 188. So that means combined. So those are step two and step three. So I'll put parentheses here just to signify each piece, but we don't need them. But x comes from some college, x plus three comes from the associate's degree, x plus 41 comes from the bachelor's degree. And when we add them together, they should add up to give us 188. So combine your like terms, x, x, and x will give you three x. Three plus 41 is 44. Subtract 44 from both sides, that would be 3x equal 144. Divide by three, x is equal to 48. So now we need to check to make sure we've actually answered the question once we have a value for x. So it says, what is the salary for each? So x is equal to 48, so that's going to represent some college. 48 plus three, which is 51, would be the associates. Then 48 plus 41 will give you 89. I remember all three should add up to 188. Okay, let's look at another one. You are choosing between two long distance phone plans. Plan A has a monthly fee of $20 with a charge of five cents per minute for long distance calls. Plan B has a monthly fee of $5 with a charge of 10 cents per minute for long distance calls. How many minutes, for how many minutes of long distance will the cost for the plans be the same? So we have three unknowns in this case as well. We have um, the amount of long distance calls, plan A and then plan B. So we can let long distance calls, the number of long distance calls be X. Now, when we look at the description of plan A, it has a monthly fee of $20. That means no matter what goes on, every month you're gonna pay $20. So when you enter a month, you're gonna pay $20. Then it's gonna charge you five cent per long distance call. So you're gonna do 20 plus the five cent times X. So that means if you don't make any long distance call, X is zero and all you paid was $20. You've made one minute of long distance calls, it's gonna be five cents added to it. Two minutes, two times five, be 10 cent, $20 and 10 cent and so on. So that's how this is set up. And then plan B, 
you pay five dollars per uh, every month, and then it's ten cent per minute. So why is this uh, something like this is important? You know, you comparing comparing plans. Um, at some point, Plan B is going to catch Plan A. We know initially Plan A is more expensive because I'm paying twenty dollars a month. But if I know I'm going to go over a certain amount of minutes, then Plan A would be the way to go because if I know every month I'm going to go over a certain amount of long distance minutes, I'm only going to get charged five cent per minute. Wherein Plan B. Once I hit that mark, I'm still going to get charged 10 cents per minute. So it depends on how many minutes I'm going to actually be making uh, long distance calls for every month. So that's what we would do. We were, uh, they ask us for how many minutes will the cost of the plans be the same? Be the same means we set them equal to each other. We want to know when are they going to be equal. And then we go ahead and solve. Subtract 5 from both sides. That'll be 15 plus five, uh, 0.05x equal to 0.10x. Subtract 0.05x from both sides. That'd be 15 equal to 0.05x. Then divide by 0 0.05. And my result would be 300 equal to x. So my solution is 300x, I mean 300, excuse me. And that means that at 300 minutes, these plans will be the same. And if that's the case, that means if I know I'm going to cover 300 minutes every month, what I wouldn't choose is plan B. I would choose plan A because at 300 minutes, they're going to be the same. And then after that, I'm only going to be charged five cents per minute. Where in plan B, I would get charged 10 cents per minute. All right, we've got another one. Your local computer store is having a sale after 40% price reduction. Your purchase, you purchase a camera for $276. What was the camera's price before the reduction? So the way any type of retail, any type of sale uh, process goes, you have an original price, you're gonna minus a reduction, and then is, that's going to be equal to your sales price. So we know we're gonna let X be equal to the original price. The sales price was given to us, which was 276. So where a lot of people make a mistake is that uh, the part of the price reduction so we cannot put 40% or 0.4 in here because the percentage doesn't stand alone. You had to do 40% of something. And you can't do 40% of the sales price because the sales price didn't exist until after you did your price reduction. So you're doing 40% of the original price and of means multiplication in mathematics. So that's why you're doing 0.4, which is your 40% times X, which is your original price. So this is how you would set up the equation x minus 0.4x equal to 276. Your original price, which is x, your price reduction, 40% of your original price, equal to 276. The next place where a lot of people make a mistake is that, uh, and that's why I put a one right here, they forget that there is a one right here and we would combine a like term. So you actually have one minus 0.4, which is 0.6. So you have 0.6x equal to 276. Now divide both sides by that 0.6, and the original price is 460. All right, so try those work problems out. If you have any more questions about them, make sure you uh, shoot them to me. But next in this section, they, do, uh, they ask you to solve for specified variables. That just means what you want to do is get the variable by itself on one side of the equation. You don't have to have, come down with a solid number like x is equal to five, you just have to solve that variable so that it can be on one side by itself. So here we're gonna solve for L, we have P equal to two L plus two W. So you treat these letters as, as if they were numbers because they do represent numbers. So if I had seven equal to two L plus five, if I want to solve for L, I would subtract five from both sides, follow that same procedure. I wanna solve for L, so I subtract two W from both sides. That'll be P minus 2W on the left equal to 2L. I cannot combine the P and the 2W. They are not alike. So I just leave it as P minus 2W. Divide by 2 now to get L by itself. The 2's cancel on the right. Then that would be P minus 2W over 2 as my final answer. All right. You cannot cancel those 2's out. We'll talk about that in a second. But that is your final answer in its form, in this form. Now, if you want to simplify further, which you're not asked to, uh, but if you are, 
trying to simplify further, what you cannot do is cancel out these twos and be left with P minus W. That two has to go into each term. So that has to simplify to P over two or be broken up into P over two minus two W over two. Those twos cancel and you be left with P over two minus W. That's the correct, correct way of simplifying. So you aren't asked to do that because that two cannot divide evenly into each term, but you can go that way if you like. Now, if the two could divide evenly into both terms, this is just an if scenario, what if scenario. In other words, if I have 4P minus 2W over 2, 2 can divide into 4, 2 can divide into P, then you have to simplify because they always want the answer in this most simplified way of expressing it or most simplified terms. So take the 2 into the 4 and into the 2, and that'll be 2P minus W. Once again, that's just a what if scenario, um, so you'll see the difference in what you have. All right, let's do uh, one more. Solve for P, we have T equal to D plus PM. So I'm trying to get P by itself, so I move the D to the left side by subtracting it from both sides. That'll be T minus D equal to PM. And now I'll divide by M, because I want to get P by itself. And my final answer will be T minus D over M. All right. Last section out of this packet, solving linear inequalities, a linear equations, 2x plus 5 equal to 7, just an example of one. And an example of a linear inequality is taking that equal sign, removing it, and putting an inequality there, 2x plus 5 greater than 7. We'll solve them all the same. Uh, we have one thing to look out for when we're doing our solving, but the same thing that you would do when you're dealing with equ equations, you would do with inequalities, subtract 5 from both sides, divide by 2. So uh, the difference will be in the, not just in your symbolism, but in your solution set. You'll have one solution when it comes to a linear, inequal, uh, linear equation. And that's x equal to 1. So you want to know when is 2x plus 5 equal to 7. That's when x is equal to 1. But when you're solving linear inequalities, you have a solution set, which will represent infinite amount of solutions. So when will 2x plus 5 be greater than 7? That's when x is greater than 1. So you, all values greater than 1 will work for this statement that will make that statement true. So in other words, when 2x plus 5 is equal to 8, when 2x plus 5 is equal to 10, when 2x plus 5 is equal to 100. So there's an infinite amount of values that you can plug in for x to make this left side greater than the right side. So anything greater than 1 would be part of the solution set. All right. So your inequality symbols, less than, less than or equal to, put the uh, greater than and then greater than or equal to. Uh, we're going to graph using open and closed circles in this section. Um, the less than and greater than will use an open circle. That means you will exclude that value or not use that value. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to will be a closed circle. It means you would include that value. So this is what we mean here by include and exclude. Um, if it's greater than 2, if your solution set is greater than 2, then 2 is not included as a part of your solution set. But if x is greater than or equal to 2, then 2 is a part of your solution set. So that's the difference between including and excluding. So for this first solution set, you will use an open circle over the 2. Second set, you will use a closed circle over the 2. So here's a breakdown of the different scenarios you may see. So if you're talking about graphing on a generic number line, remember the number line is 0 in the middle, everything to the right positive, everything to the left negative. Um, when I look at negative 2, everything to the right of it is greater than it. Everything, everything to the left of it is less than it. If I look at positive 1, everything to the right of it is greater than it. Everything to the left of it is less than it. So when I look at the solution set x is greater than a, I'm looking at all the values that are to the right of a. Put an open circle over it and shade to the right. Same thing here, but I put a closed circle over it, shade to the right. If I'm looking for the values that are less than a, I'm looking for all the values that are to the left of A. Open circle over A, shade to the left. Here we do closed circle because it's or equal to shade to the left. Now for these next four scenarios, we're talking about all of the values in between A and B. We're talking about values that are greater than A but less than B. So we're shading between A and B. Should be a B right there, left that off. Um, and you're just alternating where you would use your open and closed circles according to your symbolism. Here both open circles, here open and closed. Here closed and open, 
And then for this last one, both of them are closed. All right, so to solve 4x minus 7 greater than or equal to 5, add 7 to both sides. That'd be 4x is greater than or equal to 12. Divide by 4, x is greater than or equal to 3. Put a 3 generically on the number line, close circle, shade to the right. So the one thing we have to consider when solving inequalities is if you're going to divide or multiply both sides by a negative value, then you must flip or change the inequality. So if I have negative 3x, it's greater than 21. If I'm going to divide both sides by that negative 3, then once I do that, it goes from greater than to less than. So x is less than negative 7. Negative 7, open circle over it, shade to the left. All right, so one more example I would just pack it. If we have a three-part inequality, we have negative three is less than two X plus one, which is less than or equal to three. You want to solve as if you were trying to keep X on the in, in the middle. Um, that was the last four scenarios out of your chart. So you want to keep X in the middle, solve for X in the middle. We will subtract one from all three parts. It's a three-part inequality, so we subtract one from all three parts. Cancels out in the middle. That leaves me negative four on the left and then positive two on the far right. Then I divide by two, because once again, I'm trying to keep X by itself, or get X by itself. Divide by two, that cancels out in the middle. On the left, I have negative two. Far right, two over two is one. So I have X is greater than negative two, but less than or equal to one. Shade between negative two and one. Open circle over negative two. Closed circle over, over positive one. Let me know if you have any questions.